So today uh, we are going to start genetics and uh, in genetics, first of all, we are going to discuss different pattern of inheritance in different type of genetic diseases. So first of all, we will discuss how autosomal dominant diseases can be inherited. So what will be the pattern of autosomal dominant diseases if one parent is affected? Now in this example, uh, the father is affected and the mother is unaffected. Remember that uh, in dominant diseases, in dominant diseases, there is no carrier state. Two points you need to remember about dominant diseases is that one is that uh, dominant diseases or either they are sex linked or they are autosomal the dominant diseases does not have a carrier state and only one defective gene is required to cause the disease so remember these two points now if in the question they mentioned that one parent is affected then it means that parent have one faulty gene that is causing the disease. Now let's do a crossover. During meiosis, uh, these two chromosomes will separate and cells will form, gamete cells will form. One gamete will, uh, one sperm with this chromosome and one will be with the normal chromosome. So one sperm will contain the chromosome that has the defective gene and one uh, will contain the chromosome that is normal. Now, similarly, uh, two types of egg cells will be formed and both the types will have a normal chromosome because the mother is unaffected in this case. Now, one possibility is that the sperm with the abnormal chromosome will combine with a normal egg and result is shown here that uh, the child will be affected. Now, the other possibility is that uh, the sperm containing the normal chromosome will meet an egg that contain the normal chromosome and another child. So this is the second possibility. First possibility is that, that this one will combine with this one, which will result in a child having the disease or affected child. And in the second scenario, the second will combine with this one. Similarly, the third possibility is that, so first uh, we uh, crossed, uh, we did a cross between this abnormal and these two normal, which will result in two affected children. Now, uh, other two possibilities that this one will combine with, with, with either this or this, which will result in normal children. So in autosomal, autosomal dominant diseases, if one parent is affected, you can see in this crossover that out of four, two children are affected and two are unaffected. 
so 50% of the children will be affected in autosomal dominant diseases if one parent is affected and you can see in this cross that uh, the children that are affected one is a boy and one is a girl so there is no specific predilection for boys and girls in autosomal diseases all the children has an equal chance to get affected so for um, this discussion we can conclude that one defective gene is required to cause an uh, a dominant disease and if a parent is affected with a autosomal dominant disease then 50% children will be affected and 50% children will be unaffected and there will be no carrier state in case of autosomal dominant inheritance the example of autosomal dominant conditions that are commonly asked in lab 1 they are polycystic kidney disease huntington disease and neurofibromatosis so these three diseases they have an autosomal dominant inheritance and if one parent is affected then 50% of the chance that the children will be or 50% of the children will be affected chance of a grand children to get affected now all of these uh, four gets married so this parent uh, will produce uh, two normal children and two abnormal children similarly this one will also produce two normal and two abnormal so out of eight four will be abnormal and four children of this person and four children of this person they all will be normal so we can say that out of 16 grandchildren four will be affected and 12 will be unaffected two affected children will be produced by this person two will be produced by this person two normal and two normal by both of them so total four abnormal and 40 uh, 20 uh, 12 normal children grandchildren four abnormal grandchildren and 12 normal grandchildren so four and 16 is basically 25% because half or 50% of 16 is 8 and the 25% is 4 so in autosomal dominant inheritance 50% chance of a child getting affected and 20% 25% chance of a grandchildren to get affected is this point clear to everyone um did you say uh if this couple gets married and has children then the likelihood will yes. be percent yes and if yes. the affected children then reproduce further yeah. yes there will be 25% uh, we, uh, we need to account yes we need to count all the children affected and unaffected to see okay. the total chance okay so if if this couple gets married has children whatever <clears throat> uh the yes. incidence will be 50% if this one marries if this one marries yes okay and so when is it going to be 25% their grandchildren yes 25% in grandchildren Mm-hmm. because their uh, grandchildren uh, we need to consider all the possibilities right so that's why if we suppose that uh, these two persons get married and they produced four children and out of those four 50% were affected and 50% were unaffected now if the question mm-hmm. ask about the grandchildren then again we need to consider all the possibilities 
all the chances. So for that to uh, calculate, we need to consider or uh, suppose that uh, all of these uh, four, uh, their children gets married and they produce uh, four grandchildren. Four from this, from four from this, four from this, and four from this. Total 16 grandchildren. Are you following me? Right. Yes. So out of these 16 grandchildren, only four will be affected. Two by uh, this person and two by this person. So out of 16 uh, grandchildren, only four will be affected and 12 will be normal. Right. So four out of 16 is 25%. So if in the question, uh, they ask about an autosomal dominant disease that a person is affected by an autosomal dominant disease. What are the chances that his grandchildren will be affected? Then your answer should be 25% chance. And if they ask about how much, uh, how much chance of a child to be affected, then your answer will be 50%. 50%. And not 25 yeah, this is actually, I think, uh, a very common question, right, in genetics? Yes, very common question. Yeah. Okay. In genetics, uh, there will be one or two these type of questions. Okay, and, and one more question. The autosomal dominant conditions, should we just concentrate on PKD, Huntington's, and neurofibromatosis, or are these just given as examples for now? Yes, they are the most commonly asked in the PLAB one, though there are many other autosomal <laughs> dominant conditions, but uh, for right. PLAB one, you, uh, you need to memorize only these. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So there's one question I would like to ask. Um, in, the, in, the, in the first scenario, when the father is affected and the mother is unaffected, so when, when these, uh, I was just thinking like when the first chromosomes, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, confused about uh, how this uh, uh, like cross it happens. Like the first chromosome we take from this and the other one from the other. So that makes like one, un, um, one affected child, the same like one uh, affected chromosome and then the unaffected then makes her that female. So how does these two uh, unaffected uh, happens? Like, is it the normal one that it, then there is a, a, a cross with the two normal one of the female? Uh, whenever you are considering uh, this type of cross, uh, we, all, we will only uh, keep in mind that uh, all the possible scenarios that can happen. Right. So there are only four possible scenarios. It doesn't mean that they will only produce four children. They can produce two children or one children. That doesn't right. matter. But so, while doing calculations, we need to consider all the possibilities. So with this cross, there are only four possibilities that either this one combined with this one or this one combined with this one. Right. That this sperm the abnormal sperm will combine with a normal uh, ohm 50% of the time. And 50% of the time, there's a chance that this normal sperm combine with any of them. Right. So that's why there are only four possibilities. Right. So if, for example, this couple has only two children, so what? even then there will be 50% chance of uh, one, yes, one child. Yes, there will be 50 Yes. Mm -hmm. If he okay. has uh, two children, yeah, then still uh, during uh, intercourse or during fertilization, uh, the chance will be fifty percent. Now, uh, to God that uh, these two children can be normal, the chance during fertilization or during intercourse will still be fifty percent. So they can be affected or they can be normal? Not affected, yes. 
we are uh, talking about a chance here and it's not certainty that if the person produces four child and uh, two of them will be affected and two of them will be unaffected no they are mm -hmm. just asking about the chance or how much possibility so right. we can only guess that okay. if you produce four children then there is a chance that 50 percent of them will be affected again uh, uh, you can uh, see that i am saying chance right okay that out of four uh, children uh, two two will be affected so there is a chance right it's not necessary that it will be true right okay thank you so this was autosomal uh, dominant inheritance. Autosomal inheritance in autosomal inheritance, both males and females, both are if, if equally affected. So if they give you a pedigree and both males and females are affected, then the pattern will be autosomal and not X-linked. Now autosomal recessive inheritance. <clears throat> autosomal recessive inheritance when we say recessive then remember that in dominant we said that only one defective uh, gene can cause the disease while when we are talking about a recessive disease either autosomal recessive or x-linked recessive, recessive two defective genes are required both the chromosomes should be abnormal to cause the disease. If there is only one defective gene, then a carrier state will be produced. That uh, the person with one defective gene will carry the gene to next generation without developing the disease. So when we are talking about a recessive inheritance, either X-link or autosomal. You need to rem remember that, that one defective gene will produce a carrier state. While in case of dominant diseases, we saw that there was no carrier state. <clears throat> so what will be the pattern of inheritance of autosomal recessive disease if both the parents are carriers? as seen is this in this diagram that the father is a carrier and the mother is a carrier as well now let's see what are the four possibilities so there's a one possibility that uh, this abnormal chromosome combines with this abnormal from the mother and result in the formation of this child so this child will have two defective genes. So one child will be affected. Now, the second possibility is that this abnormal combined with this normal chromosome from mother. So it will result because there's only one abnormal gene. So a carrier state will be produced. So this child will be a carrier. So we are done with the possibilities of this chromosome. That this chromosome can either combine with this to produce this or it can combine with this to produce this one. Now let's consider the possibilities of this chromosome, the normal one. So the normal one from father can combine with abnormal one from mother to produce again a carrier child and it can combine with the normal one from the mother to produce this uh, normal child with both the normal genes. So these are the only four possibilities that can happen. So you can see in this uh, inheritance pattern that one child is affected, one is unaffected, and two are carriers. So in autosomal recessive inheritance, if both the parents are carrier, 
25 percent of the children will be affected 25 percent of the children will be unaffected and 50 percent of the children will be carriers is it clear Yes, it is clear. The example of autosomal recessive conditions that are commonly asked in lab one is cystic fibrosis, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, Wilson disease, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We have discussed thalassemia and sickle cell anemia in hematology chapter, and Wilson disease in uh, gastroenterology, uh, yes, gastroenterology chapter, and this one in endocrine chapter so we have uh, uh, studied these diseases so that's why they will be commonly asked in the lab one now x link recessive inheritance again we are talking about a recessive disease so two defective genes are required to cause a disease but remember that males only have one X chromosome. So X-linked recessive disease in males will produce the disease even with one defective gene because there is only one X chromosome. While in females, Two defective genes are required to cause an X-linked recessive disease because they have two X chromosomes. So the other chromosome can have a normal gene. So the disease will not be produced. Recessive disease will not be produced because there's only one defective gene and one normal gene. So a carrier state will be produced. So from this uh, discussion, we can uh, confer that X-linked diseases, they commonly affect males. So if a pedigree is given to you in the PLEB1 exam and only males are affected, then uh, you can say that uh, this disease is an X-linked disease because X-linked disease commonly affect males because only one defective gene can cause the disease in males, while in females, two defective genes are required to cause the disease in case of X-linked recessive diseases. That's why X-linked recessive diseases, they affect the girls less commonly. <clears throat> So let's uh, do an example. X-linked recessive inheritance and the father is affected. Father is affected, it means he has a defective gene on X chromosome. Now, another point you need to remember about X-linked diseases, that X-linked disease can never be inherited from father to their son. X-linked diseases cannot be passed from fathers to their sons because the sons get a Y chromosome from the father. So that's why X-linked disorders can never be passed from father to the sons. So in this example, we have an affected father. So his sons will not be affected. So 0% chance of a male child to be affected in case of X-linked recessive inheritance if the father is affected because father give Y chromosome to his son. That's why X-linked disorders can never be passed from father to sons. 
what about the daughters because the daughters will get the x chromosome from the father and this is the only x chromosome that the father have so all the daughters will be carrier all the 100% of the daughters will be carriers if the mother is un unaffected so x linked recessive inheritance because two defective genes are required so uh, the daughters will get a normal x chromosome from the mother and an abnormal x chromosome from the father so they, it will produce a carrier state so 100% of the daughters uh, will uh, be carriers and 100% uh, of the sons will be unaffected or 0% of the sons will be affected so 0% of the children will be affected you can say that and 50% of the children will be carriers if they are asking about the children then you will say 50% of the children will be carriers and if they specifically out of, uh, ask about the daughters then you will say 100% of the daughters will be carriers is this point clear and uh, if the daughters are 100% carrier then uh, the son will be uh, uh, zero 0% zero affected yes 0% of the sons will be affected or 100% of the sons will be unaffected so uh, look, pay a close attention to the wording of the question right so what about then children so, so what about the no what should what should we say about then if they ask uh, uh, how much percentage of children will be affected and unaffected so would it be 50% both if they ask about affected then 0% if they affected. ask about unaffected 100% children because no child is affected only two girls are or 50% of the children are carriers carrier right. state is not affected it is not an affected state because carrier state does not produce the disease so you cannot say that uh, these children are affected. They are right. carriers. They just have one defective gene and they does not have the disease. So they are not affected. Right. Any more questions? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I'm very clear on the whole X-linked so far, I'm floating a little. Okay, I'll uh, repeat it for you. Thank you. And this is just for father, right? Affected father. Yes, this is just for affected father. Okay. Though there are other possibilities as well, if uh, the mother is affected with an X-linked recessive disease, but that is very less common because X-linked recessive inheritance, uh, they are, uh, they does not, they usually does not affect females. So it will not be asked in the PLAB1 exam. So you will just focus on this scenario that in X-linked recessive inheritance, uh, the father is affected. You will either get this scenario that the father is affected or you will get this scenario that mother is a carrier. You will never get a scenario in which uh, the mother will be affected in an X-linked recessive inheritance. So what will happen, sorry, you can repeat everything, just a, a small question. If, if the mother is like in among these all four children, if one of this uh, child uh, is a, a female and it is um, a carrier, if uh, that child gets married to another uh, uh, normal person, will she produce um, uh, uh, affected children or carrier children? So let's suppose uh, the mother is a carrier. Right. So mother carrier means a mother has one normal gene and one abnormal gene. Right. Or one uh, normal X chromosome or one abnormal X chromosome. Yes. And the father is unaffected means he has a normal X chromosome. Right. 
now we, we know that the mother will give X chromosome to her daughter. Right. So because the mother is a carrier and she has one normal chromosome, so one daughter will be normal and one, one will be a carrier. Carrier. So no one will be affected. Yes, daughters will not be affected. Now uh, let's consider sons. There's a chance that uh, one uh, son will get a normal X chromosome and one with the defective X chromosome. Right. So the one who get the defective X chromosome, he will have the disease. So one daughter will be carrier and one son will be affected. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Now out of, out of uh, four, only one uh, child is having the disease or you can say 25% of the children uh, will have the disease if the mother is a carrier and the inheritance is X-linked recessive. Right. Uh, okay, now uh, repeat, uh, let's repeat X-linked recessive inheritance if the father is affected. So uh, father has two chromosomes, mother has two chromosomes. There are only four possibilities. Two by two is four, so there are only four possibilities. There can never be any more than four possibilities. So if the father is affected with an X-linked recessive inheritance, X-linked recessive inheritance means uh, the father X chromosome is defective. So, the father will uh, give Y chromosome to his sons. So the sons are out of the equation. They will not be affected. Neither carriers nor affected. They will be per perfectly normal. Is that right, Dr. Shafaraz? Dr. Shafaraz, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So father is affected, it means he has one uh, defective X chromosome and he will pass this defective X chromosome to his daughters. He has only one X chromosome, so all the daughters will get this one X chromosome, so all the daughters will be carriers. And because he cannot pass this X chromosome to his sons, so all the sons will be normal or will be unaffected. Are you following me? Yes, got it. So keep it simple and just focus on this one def defective X chromosome. Okay, that can only be passed to his daughters, but not his sons. His daughters, because the sons will get Y chromosome with this, from this affected father. So he uh, cannot right. pass the disease to his sons. Yes. Right. So remember these two, uh, two or three basic principles and you will never get confused. That X-linked diseases cannot be passed to, to the sons from the fathers. Okay, thank you. And X-linked uh, diseases, if they are recessive, then all the daughters will be carrier if the father is affected. And if it's dominant, then all the daughters will be affected because in dominant conditions, there is no carrier state only one defective gene will cause the disease. So if we change the scenario and say that this is a, an X-link dominant disease. So in case of X-link dominant disease, again, because it is an X-link disease and the father is affected, so all the sons will be normal. But the X chromosome with the dominant gene will be passed to all the daughters. And because uh, we are talking about an X-link dominant inheritance, so all the daughters will be affected because there is no carrier state in a dominant inheritance. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now let's uh, discuss another scenario, X-linked dominant inheritance. Uh, we are clear about X-linked dominant inheritance if the father is affected, that all his daughter, 100% of his daughter will carry the disease. Now X-linked dominant inheritance, if the mother is affected and the father is normal. Now we know that uh, sons receive an X chromosome from the mother 
and daughters receive an X chromosome from the mother. So we can say that uh, males and females, uh, both of them can get this uh, defective uh, dominant gene from mother. So what will happen if, uh, now there are two possibilities that uh, the son will uh, either get a, this normal X chromosome from mother, this one, father is unaffected, so he does not have the abnormal gene. So one son uh, that is produced will be unaffected. Now, the second possibility is that uh, the son can get this defective X chromosome. So he will have the disease. So out of two sons, one is affected and one is unaffected. Now let's uh, see what the daughters will get. So the daughters will get a normal X chromosome from the father. And now there is 50% there is possibility that she will get this abnormal X chromosome from the mother or a normal X chromosome from the mother. So one daughter will be affected and one will be unaffected. The one who gets a, uh, this defective chromosome will have the disease because we are talking about an X-linked dominant inheritance and there is no carrier state in X-linked dominant inheritance. Only one defective chromosome can cause the disease.